Hi, Kishore. How are Hi. you? Good. Thank you, Jansi. How about you? I'm doing good as well. Uh, Kishore, congratulations on your first book, Don't Coast. How do you feel about it? Yeah, feeling good. Feeling really good. Great. I enjoyed reading this book um, because I feel like you've discussed some simple yet uh, very profound truth bombs. And uh, most of us are uh, looking to attain both personal and professional growth. But sometimes we unconsciously or unintentionally neglect what you have outlined as um, easy to remember and simple uh, four piece to accelerate personal and professional growth. Um, I believe Don't Coast is not just a book, but I think it's going to be a, a tool that will help people navigate uh, lull seasons in personal and professional lives. So um, congratulations again. And um, I'm sure it is going to take a lot of people through a journey of change uh, and asking questions uh, to themselves. Um, I think one of my favorite lines is, uh, the purpose of your life is to find uh, your gift and the meaning of your life uh, to give it away. Uh, that's definitely one of my favorite lines in this section uh, that you describe on people and how it's important for uh, professional growth. Uh, you mentioned that living a meaningful life and how we need to manage um, the various uh, dynamics with uh, people contribute to accelerating professional growth. Um, of course, today we will be exploring um, one of the four P's under professional growth, which is people. And But before I get into more details, uh, I would like to know and understand uh, the behind the scenes of Don Coast and what made you write this book. Uh, sure. Yeah, thank you, Jomsi. So if I'm not wrong, you're working with me for more than... Uh three and a half years by now, I think. Yes, that's correct. And, um, yeah, that's correct. Yeah, and you know me reasonably well. Um, so I always say that I'm relatively easygoing, people-centered, happy-go-lucky person. But some people might differ with me on the easygoing part, though. Uh, yeah, I've got 20 years of corporate experience. And over the years, I, you know, I, lived in, I lived and worked in six different countries, such as Canada, UK, Australia, New Zealand, Singapore, and Germany. What I mean to say is that I had the opportunity and experience of working with truly global teams and learn from them. And over the years, I realized that my natural strength is being able to relate with people at any level of the business across the globe. Um, having said that, you may be surprised to hear when I say, actually, uh, I've actually started living life at the age of 38. In fact, I mentioned this in the book as well. Um, when I look back during uh, my schooling and college days, and in fact, even the first 15 years of my professional career as well, my success was mostly defined by people around me, and I was dependent on others to make uh, my choices. And it was very hard by, you know, uh, and I worked very hard by putting in long hours of long hours at work, and you know, I ignored my personal development. There were, of course, few material gains, but my soul and spirit were longing for meaning and fulfillment, you know, which is missing. And Jomsi, when I had the opportunity to set up and lead Energy Tech Global way back in the last quarter of 2014, I was fully convinced that it was the hand of God giving me the new opportunity to live my life to the fullest. And it gave me a new purpose, you know, to use my natural gifts. And I decided that I'll make the rest of my life count and make a real difference in the lives of the people who have already started working with me and who are going to work with me, uh, you know, in this journey. And I decided to help them achieve their potential and make an impact to be a better, to be a better version of themselves. And I wanted to help them grow in their personal and professional life. The problem is, how can I do that? Um, you know, in order to add value to others, one must make themselves more valuable. You can't give what you don't have, right? You can't tell what you don't know. And you can't share what you don't feel. So being an out-and-out out techie, out-and-out out techie, very quickly, within a few months of uh, starting my uh, journey at Energy Tech Global, I realized that you know, the leadership skills that I learned and practiced during the first 15 years of my corporate life are not enough. And on the top of that, I've started exploring ways to recruit more smarter, more talented people than me into the organization. I mean, people like you, right? But the problem is, 
you know who you are is who you attract i keep saying this you know you heard me saying this multiple times uh, uh, you know at office as well so what i what i'm uh, arriving at is very soon i realized it that i am becoming a lid on the organization in other words i am putting a cap on both the teams and the company's effectiveness and their ability to succeed so therefore i immediately saw the need to improve my organizational skills and leadership skills and i was lucky to know about a world renowned leadership expert called john c maxwell and i'm glad to have him as my mentor and uh, you know the journey as well you know it all happened when i started reading a couple of books uh, i read the uh, 15 invaluable laws of growth and later i read the uh, 21 irrefutable laws of uh, leadership uh, those are my favorite books till date as well and i got immensely benefited and probably you remember me sharing some of those concepts that i learned with the teams as well and then i i decided in 2019 i decided that you know i will go and attend a leadership training at uh, orlando florida and uh, and then i did and then i started getting mentored by john c maxwell so that's when you know when i started energy tech when i started you know recruiting more smarter people and when i felt the need for not becoming a lid on the organization that's when you know that's when i made my intentional journey and i started living intentionally and i made growth as my number one priority in life and i started increasing my level of awareness continuously looking for ways and means to you know learn from others uh, who are at a higher level of awareness who have accomplished who have tasted success in their life and it continuously opened a lot of doors for me in my life and uh, when i started work, you know it started working for me as well as for energy tech as well and you know that we are a team of 140 staff now and um, and i'm proudly say that uh, now our annualized rolling attrition is 2 percentage imagine i'm talking about a city like hyderabad which has got more than 1500 it companies and nearly 600000 staff having direct employment in the it industry and you know the you know average attrition rate of any company is you know about 12 percentage you know between 12 to 16 percentage also which means something that i learned and something that i'm practicing you know uh, myself and my leadership team here you know it started working so then i thought maybe i would write a book because now we are we are a fast growing organization you know a lot of people are joining us in this journey and i have a lot of people in my network who never you know thought like me or you know never felt the need for uh, you know having an intentional uh, intentional living and making growth as their number one priority so i thought maybe let me write a book and you know share my learnings share the principles which helped me to achieve whatever little success that i had in my professional career till date and um, you are right in your opening remark you said um, the purpose of your life is to find your gift and the meaning of life is to give it away so that is the very reason why i decided to write the book uh, john say i hope uh, i hope i answered your question yeah that's that was a beautiful answer uh, intentional growth and meaning for life just nuggets of truth bombs there itself um, yeah. um i mean you mentioned in your answer or you touched upon lightly that um, it is very important to surround yourself with like minded people um this is very often told in a very light manner and it's not really significantly understood or taken seriously by people can you just uh, elaborate on why we need to actually be uh, cautious and cognizant of who we are with yeah sure sure so that's uh, you know that's uh, um a very um, important insight that you touched upon so you now look at people you know we say people are social animals right and uh, and you know that our survival depends on our ability to form as communities and uh, you know or cultures and what's a community it's a group of people with a standard set of values and beliefs and uh, you know in your in in our office as well in, in your team or you know, uh, you know at our workplace we know that we are not good at everything right but if we go out as a group and if we go if we try to do something as a group we are pretty damn amazing we all have our strengths and we all have our weaknesses as well and what we do at energy tech you know we don't try to fix someone's vulnerability our goal is to amplify their strengths and we would not only amplify our strengths we would surround ourselves with people who can do what we cannot do right and 
believe me when i say this when we are surrounded by people who believe in what we believe something remarkable happens in our lives so let me let me decode this for you by giving uh, you know few small examples so, so when i in 2000 uh, in the year 2000 i went to bangalore for the first time uh, actually i was doing my masters my mtech uh, masters in technology in srivengetesh university tirupati and then for the last semester project work i went to bangalore and you know that the native language of people living in bangalore is you know kannada most of them though they speak english and uh, and my native language is telugu so when i went there and i started uh, staying in a bachelor's apartment uh, uh, along with a lot of uh, bachelors uh, at a place called ashwantpur and when i was staying in that apartment jomsi um, on the very first day uh, i met someone who started uh, you know speaking in telugu which is my native language so we immediately became friends again another instance uh, in the year 2007 um, the company that i was working for sent me to a place called edmonton in canada on my first overseas work assignment and after a couple of weeks i heard someone speaking in hindi which is our indian national language and i heard that per gentleman talking in hindi in a restaurant and i went and i introduced myself and you know what later in the evening that gentleman helped me with you know some information and taken me to few indian grocery stores and you know given me the details of few indian restaurants and within no time we made a great connection with each other so what am i trying to explain here what i'm trying to explain is when we are surrounded by people who who believe in what we believe something remarkable happens right when we are in a strange environment where we don't feel comfortable what do we look for we look for anyone who may share some of the values or beliefs that we have so in the examples that we i have given you know same thing has happened and the moment you find someone who share the same beliefs and same values like you do you know you start uh, forming a genuine and a very intense bond with them because you know what happened in both the cases though it is not quite uh, uh, explicit you feel like they know you know they know how you grew up they know your culture they know the things that you care about right those are the ones which will give you that common connection therefore to succeed in your professional life or personal life you should be you should be you know cognizant of these things you know you should be looking out for people who believe in what you believe right so especially if you look at professional life you should be definitely working for a company which believes in the same values that you believe in it is important to surround yourself with like minded people otherwise you won't succeed and you know let me give you another you know small example to, to decode this so a small boy went to his father and he asked him daddy what is the value of my life and uh, the father without answering question answering his question and he gave him three identical precious stones and asked the boy to go and sell one stone in the local market one at a museum and one at a store that sells precious gems in the city so but he gave an, an interesting instruction to the boy he said uh, you know when you go to any of these places when they ask you what is the price of the gem he said don't say anything just raise two fingers right so the boy went to the market and he he followed the father's instructions and uh, you know he sold the stones for 2 dollars to a woman who wanted to keep those uh, uh, stones in her garden 2 dollars later the boy went to the museum and sold the stone for 200 dollars to the museum in charge because he would like to add those stones to his rare stone collection but something interesting happens when the boy went to the precious gem store when he went to the gem store and he showed those stones to the owner the owner in turn uh, you know uh, said these are the rarest stones in the world and how much are you selling it for he asked the boy how much are you selling it for and the boy said nothing because his father told him not to speak right he just raised his two fingers immediately the shop owner said no problem i'll pay you 20000 dollars for the stone so when he went back and narrated what happened to his father the father said it doesn't matter where you come from what the color of your skin or even how much money you have what matters is the place you choose to be in and whom you surround yourself with many people go through their entire life believing that they are worth only those 2 dollars in fact they might they may be worth you know 
millions of dollars but it's the belief which makes them feel that they're only worth two dollars why is it because they're surrounded themselves with people who see them as you know only worth two dollars right so that's why i always say this and you heard me saying it you know many of our uh, meetings or or you know when you know during uh, interviews as well that the greatest value in life is not what you get the greatest value in life is what you become and when you are looking for a career change before joining any new organization i always say this you know don't ask what am i getting here ask what am i becoming here you know don't join an easy crowd you won't grow go where the expectations are high go where the demands are high you know go where the pressure is on to perform to change to develop you know to read or to study or to possess new skills you know you've got to be wise enough to choose your new workplace and it is very important for you to surround yourself with you know more talented people more like minded people because as i quoted in my previous examples like you know something something magical happen when you are surrounded with like minded people and more you know most importantly talented people right because it would help you to become who you want to be in your life and i always believe and i'm really happy that i am never the smartest person in the room you know especially in you know, in my last 5 years 5 and a half years of uh, journey with energy tech any meeting room i go any conference room i go you know anywhere i sit in a discussion i'm i'm never the smartest person we have a lot of smart people in our organization which means the growth is guaranteed and that's why i always say people you know if you really wanted to be you know aiming for growing you know always surround yourself with more smart people like minded people then your growth is guaranteed you know um yeah i can go on and on but you know let me stop here and i hope i uh, answered uh, your question jonsi yeah i think uh, there's just a piece of your mind uh, from one of the uh, from the experience of managing one of the fastest growing companies and i've had the experience and the joy and the pleasure of working with energy tech and some of the smartest people um, you know i would say globally uh, working with some of them has been such a pleasure and i i think just just reiterating what you're saying pick uh, the organizations where you can be surrounded with people who value you and who are like minded and i think i think one of the terms or phrases that you use um, very frequently is don't look for the money or don't look for the how much the you know the organization can pay you but ask them how much can you pay me in opportunities i think i think that's something that i have heard from you often and that's definitely something that goes with with yeah. the entire uh, question as well that's why people uh, are not leaving us jomsi that's why people are staying back with us because exactly. every day they are growing they are learning and you know they are enjoying that journey right <laughs> true 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 i have i have been a witness to that and testament to that so yes i i i can speak to that as well thank you um you have been um in a very responsible position with energy tech uh, you you've said since the last 5 years and um, you've grown as a leader um in your book you mention that uh, it's important for a good leader to not think of himself or herself but it's more important that others are the central part of their leadership why do you say that this is a, i mean this is a very interesting perspective uh, john c um a good leader understands this you know the day he takes up the mantle he will give up thinking about himself or herself and you know he always uh, put others first and find ways and means to add value to them on a daily basis and i told you about my mentor john c maxwell and now he says a good leader does five things every day every day add value to people every day think of ways to add value to people every day look for ways to add value to people and every day do things that add value to people every day encourage others to add value to people you know if you are a good leader this is what you do every day you look for opportunities to add value to you know people um let me explain it again with the help of an example and uh, i i follow uh, simon senek as well few months ago i listened to an excellent talk given by him and uh, he had a great example of how focusing on others can make a significant impact on the bottom line of a company so he explained it with the you know with an with an example he said uh, he went up to a homeless woman in an urban area and asked her 
how much money she makes daily so she is actually a beggar on a street and he went up to her and asked how much money you know do you make she said 20 dollars in 8 hours okay at that time and he looked at her and she was holding a sign that was all about her and the sign message says i am homeless i am hungry i have 12 i got 12 kids my late husband is a veteran i've got back pain you know god bless you you know etc etc all that she got she got it all in there what she was trying to do is she was trying to appeal to somebody who is religious who is a veteran who is a child sympathizer and in addition to this she also surrounded herself with uh, you know a couple of pet dogs uh, pets as well so remember this is the attitude of a taker but not a giver giver you know this is all about her and uh, um, simon senek uh, asked her if he could rewrite her sign for one day and she had nothing to lose so she accepted it so next day two hours later you know he, he, she started using the sign that uh, uh, simon senek has given and then within two hours she made 40 dollars that's a twice as much money as she makes in a day and you know simon senek pulled it off within two hours and what magic did he do it's there in the sign you know what he did he changed her sign removed everything that uh, you know she was having in the first place and he, he simply wrote if you if you only give once a month please consider me next time i repeat if you only give once a month please consider me next time so the new sign has nothing to do with the taker it has everything to do with the giver you know he completely changed the perspective now she's putting herself in the giver shoes she knows that people cannot give to everyone right there will be a lot of beggars on the streets and you can't you know keep donating to everyone so what she's trying to do is she's trying to say that if you only give once in a month and that sign is imperatively saying that my cause is legitimate and i'm still going to be here after a month as well so please give it to me so she flipped the whole thing and uh, in fact simon senek flipped the whole thing and he he made that whole thing about uh, not about her but about others and it worked right and even as a leader also uh, this is my favorite quote from you know jig jiggler he says that as a leader if you help people get what they want they will help you get what you want so you know always this is what i say you know be selfless you know become a, a servant leader put others ahead of you keep others interest ahead of you you know help them get their work you know help them get what they want and they will help you and the organization and that's a simple principle which is what i'm you know i've been following and i'm trying to follow and it is working and i can certainly watch for that uh, uh, principle john c So, uh, in one section of the book, um, you discuss uh, this concept of be nice, but don't try to please uh, everybody. Uh, it's it's not something that is easy for many people. How do you how do you work with this? Yeah, this one, uh, you know, um, I had to work hard to <clears throat> learn this concept. So. Um, at the beginning of my career, John C., while I was doing my, as I said, uh, I did my MTech project work in Bangalore. So while I was doing my MTech project work, I applied for uh, a Java instructor post in one of the computer training institute, uh, namely ASCII systems in Artinagar, Bangalore. So I was asked to give a demo to one batch of students who, you know, who are learning Java. And after the demo, the center head uh, went inside the classroom and it took feedback from all the students. Later, I came to know one student rejected me out of those 10, you know, 10 students. 10, there were 10 students in that batch. One student rejected me and another student abstained from giving feedback and the rest liked my lecture. So to cut the long story short, I got selected. And uh, for some reason, after a couple of months, I became the instructor to the same batch. Actually, I was not teaching them. I was teaching a few other batches. So I was asked to teach the same batch to whom I was, have given the demo. So, you see, I was so controlled as an young leader and almost for the rest of my time with that batch, I think I taught them for two months or so. I remember every day teaching the class and looking into everyone's eyes, trying to figure out who voted against me so that I can focus more on that person and please them and prove to them that, you know, I'm worthy, I'm capable, right? You know, I can teach them, I can add value to them. Let me tell you. Trying to please everyone will be very frustrating and physically impossible as well. And the truth of the matter is, 
even if you could please everyone you know you shouldn't and i learned it the hard way so when i started you know even you know uh, energy tech or you know even before early in my leadership role working with small teams i realized that most people like me because you know i was working with small teams so most people like me and my relational connections with my team members were very strong i could please each one of them i worked very hard at developing my people pleasing skills you know underline that word people pleasing skills so at one point a leadership role for me is all about make people happy and they will follow you let me repeat it for me the leadership you know my understanding or my awareness of leadership role was all about make people happy and they will follow you and i was continuously asking myself one question is everybody happy right so john say i'm telling you no leader can please everyone all the time and it took a while for me as i said to realize that i was doing things backward all this while my goal had been to get people to like me enough so that i could get i could gain their confidence and ask them for commitment and if they decline it i simply worked harder you know to get them to like me more thinking that it would solve the problem and i gave this is interesting you see i gave most of my time and energy to the unhappiest and the least committed person in the organization even though i know that they are neither superstar nor superstars nor contributing to the vision or you know helping the bottom line of the company but still i was actually spending more time and my energy with the unhappiest and the least committed people in the organization so what am i doing i was letting that tail wag the dog instead of the dog wagging the tail <laughs> right so finally realized that i wasn't leading people i was trying to please them and i realized that i was in the friendship business i was not in the leadership business i was not i was not helping people to do better and get better but you know what jomsi i have now moved from with my new level of awareness and you know with the help of uh, my mentor now i have moved from pleasing people to challenging people let me say that again now i moved from pleasing people mode to challenging people mode and it was not an easy process for me as i said my desire to be liked by others was deeply rooted within me that's who i am right it has deeply rooted within me to the point where the best days in my leadership role were when people affirmed me and i craved for affirmation every single day which is bad but now i realize that affirmation doesn't equal leadership accomplishment with my new level of awareness now i am on a path to become the leader people needed not just the one they wanted and jomsi let me tell you that it's been one of the most difficult changes i had to make in my leadership career and you are leading a team of 10 people you also know you know and you also grown as a leader over the years now and um, i can definitely urge you know on behalf of myself and some of the people who are working with me that uh, this kind of a shift you know moving from pleasing people to challenging people is by far one of the most rewarding experience that i have you know gone through in my professional life what do you yeah what do you think about well, that's, um, that's some really uh, good practical advice for uh, people at every right people who are already lead Well, I think that was some really uh, practical advice, Kishor. Because um, this is some really good advice for both aspiring leaders and and people who are already leading some some a, a team of any size at all. Don't be in the friendship business, but um, because you're really in the business of leading teams, um, and you need to challenge people instead of trying to please people. That's some really um, good advice. Some really um, practical, uh, useful advice. um talking about leadership styles you also spoke about something very interesting about um, leaders being um, should strive and be the last one to speak this is very interesting and uh, something that's not uh, usually vouched for and told much in the mainstream corporate arena yeah yeah <laughs> yeah it's you know sometimes uh, simple things are hard to practice and follow jomsi um and uh, you know i'm not exception to this i'm still working on it <laughs> yeah so if you see 
uh, generally you know team meetings um, uh, sometimes what happens is uh, you know people who consider themselves as an excellent leaders uh, this is generally what happens in corporates right you know people who consider themselves as excellent leaders they walk into a room and say hey guys here is the problem and this is what i think is the solution but i'm interested to your opinion uh, hear your opinion and let's go around the room but it's too late right the skill is to hold your opinion to yourself until everyone has spoken because it does two things you know what it gives everybody else the feeling that they have been heard it also gives everyone else the ability to feel that they have contributed right you get the benefit of hearing what everybody has to you know think before you render your opinion so the skill is which is quite difficult but the skill is to keep your ideas to yourself and if you agree with you know while you are listening first you have to give first you should shut your mouth ask people to speak only give the problem definition don't give the solution let people start talking let people start giving their perspectives you hold your you know you keep your ideas to yourself and while people are talking if you agree with somebody don't say yes and if you disagree with somebody don't say no now simply sit there take it all and the only thing that you are allowed to do is ask questions so that you can understand you know what they mean why they have the opinion that they have and you, you must under, you will understand where they are coming from you know you know what they are speaking why are they speaking right and then and at the end you will get your turn right it sounds easy but it's not so um, as i said it sounds easy but it's not um John C you are you are also part of the team outing in i think in 2018 um all our staff and our families you know we spent few days in goa do you remember those days yeah yeah yes that was a nice trip yeah yeah so you know uh, goa is actually a beautiful um, place with lots of beaches paragliding parasailing boat riding snorkeling you know lots of things you know we had fun and one day morning some of us decided to go for a morning walk Uh, at i think if i'm not wrong maybe uh, kalangut beach or somewhere we went for a morning walk and we played beach volleyball and we had great time for a couple of hours uh, later that night and when i was surprised to listen some of our colleagues recollection you know their experience of their morning walk on the beach some remembered how sun felt on their skin and some for some they remember how you know they felt the sand on their feet few spoke about the look of the water and few spoke about vivid colors of the sunset interestingly for some it was the sounds of the ocean and birds you know those are the highlights of the walk and for some the smell of the salt air and the tanning lotion of the nearby sunbathers you see here you know different perspectives right you know it is important to listen to everyone and understand their perspective how we how we view things determines how we do things and what you see is who you will be therefore you know i'm i'm actually not good at um, uh, you know they at this uh, because of who i am and you know my nature but you know i'm getting better at it better at it and especially when i conduct these days you know core leadership meetings or you know i ask people to first give their perspective and i will wait i will make sure that i will not uh, influence anyone station i will listen out listen to everyone make my notes and then sometimes i will ask questions immediately sometimes i will you know wait uh, until you know everyone uh, you know i go around the room and then everyone uh, uh, would say what they wanted to say so yeah it's a difficult it seems very simple being the last one to speak but as a leader john c it is very important for us you know to start practicing that uh, uh, principle yeah i think this is definitely one of the most challenging pieces in the work you show being the last one to um, speak uh, this is how to shift on its own um uh, it's it's something that i it would be difficult for so many of them because listening to perspectives from the team is 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 not easy and it's it requires a lot of patience and a lot of mindset change um you've explained also that um that people will not forget uh, what what leaders have said i mean people people might forget what leaders have said but they will never forget how uh, someone might have made them feel at a certain point um what makes you you know emphasize on this a lot yeah 
uh, Jomsi, so this is something that I experienced many times throughout my life, uh, you know, even during my, you know, college days, school days, and even especially when I started my leadership journey, I can definitely tell you that people will forget what you said, they will forget what you did, but they will never forget how you made them feel. So one of the early experiences that I have uh, with this principle or perspective was that uh, when I was doing my graduation, I think it was uh, 1997 or so, I was adjudged as the best outgoing student, that is the student of the year um, of the college from where I graduated. So I felt really great, you know, college anniversaries, you know, they will have a process, there's a committee, they would select based on certain criteria, they would select the best outgoing student. And then during the college anniversary, you know, they will felicitate you, right? After this announcement was made, before, before departing from the college, I stayed in the college for about a month and I completed my practical and theory exams and, you know, and I had great time. And ever since that announcement was made, my friends started treating me special and going to college was a great time. And especially imagine after receiving the student of the year award and, you know, it really, I made a lot of great memories that time. But what happened was after a year, I had to go back to the same college for some signature. I, I need to get a signature from my principal. So the moment when I had this thought of going back to college, you know, the very thought itself, like, uh, you know, made me feel so happy because you know, clouds started forming in my head uh, because I was thinking I'm the best out. I was the best outgoing student of that college within one year. I'm going back to the college, going to meet the principal, sir. Right. So, you understand what I mean by clouds and, you know, sort of expectations that I have on in my mind. So I thought, I thought of myself as, you know, I thought started visualizing me going to the college and, you know, people coming to me and lecturers coming to me, principal coming to me, showing a lot of, you know, um, respect and, uh, you know, so on and so forth. But all those hopes came to a grinding halt when the watchman at the gate asked me, who are you? I said, man, what's wrong with you? Don't you remember me? He said, no, sorry, I don't know. I said, I'm the best outgoing student uh, of 94, 97 batch. And I won the gold medal as well. I was the best outgoing student. So I told him it doesn't you know, mean anything to him. So obviously now I need to tell him that I would like to meet the principal. So then he asked me, do, do I have the appointment? I said, no, I don't have the appointment. I said, you can't meet the principal. So he said, uh, instead of, you know, you can't meet principal, but instead of principal's room, you can go to his personal secretary's room. So instead of going to, so I was supposed to go to the personal secretary's room, but instead of going there, I went to the staff room and, you know, thinking that someone, someone would recognize me. But as I was walking towards the, uh, the staff room, the librarian madam and the English lecturers were coming. And I displayed myself gently and asked the librarian ma'am with a golden, ha golden hope, ma'am, do you remember me? With a broad smile, she said, Kishore, how can we forget you? You see, John C. Hopes returned until she completed her sentence. She said, Kishore, how can we forget you? You are the one who locked us in the room. That's when the moment of truth dawned on me. We are, we are, we are not remembered for our achievements, but we are remembered for how we impacted and touched people's lives. You know, you know, good way or bad way, right? So, you know, what I say, John C., it's very important to Think about, you know, how we are treating our colleagues at workplace. Are we praising them or are we belittling them? Do we make them feel motivated or demotivated? Or worse, do you make them feel worthless, right? So, as I said, people will never forget what you, you know, people might forget what you said, what you did, but they will never forget how you made them feel. So, I always say this, you know, I always say this on the floor, like, you know, or with the, with the leadership team that never rob your team member of the blessing of knowing that you notice and care, right? It's a few, few, free fuel, you know, you need to burn it. Yesterday I was talking to, you know, one of our team member, John C. And uh, I said, you know, you are awesome. And uh, you make it, you made a true difference to this print deliverable and it made both of us feel good. So I have no hesitation, John C., in saying that the number one reason why people would leave companies is that they do not feel valued. And that's why, as a leader, I have a rule in appreciating people. And you heard me saying this multiple times. Appreciate more than you think you should and then double it. And this is what I do. This is what you do. And, you know, this is what many of the leaders at Energy Tech do. Right. And, you know, that's why we have got uh, 
a very you know very good work culture here right where people thrive people learn you know they they always year on year they will become a different person they will also make the organization a different organization right so yeah you know that is what i uh, have to say about my experience of you know why you should uh, be very careful of what you say and you know how you make uh, others feel great uh, great market there uh, appreciate people more than what you can do the best you can do and then double it just some awesome uh, words there uh, kishore uh, thank you for sharing taking time to share these uh, these truth bombs with us the four p's and uh, i thoroughly enjoyed it and i'm sure that a lot of people who pick up this book will enjoy from enjoy the stories and the truths from uh, your grandfather's story right from when you were 6 years old to to your uh, mischiefs in college and all the way to running an organization right now we are so uh, blessed and um, to to have this book and to read this book thank you so much kishore and we hope um, you write more books and all the very best thank you very much jomchi you know i noticed it that these days people are not reading books you know it, this is youtube era you know videos era you know people they're so used to watching small clips and trying to learn from it rather than reading books and that's one of the reason which is prompting me so that uh, at least you know as we are growing this organization as more and more people are joining us um, you know not only people who are watching it from outside but definitely our own people you know who would who are going to be part of our growth journey i i definitely you know feel and hope that they would also learn something from it and they understand the kind of work culture that we are maintaining it energy tech global through this talk thanks for your time have a great day